welcome you all for the first session of the chapter coordination compounds which belongs to inorganic chemistry as we know atoms cannot exist independently in nature therefore atoms combine and molecules are formed in the molecules or compounds if you consider the constituent particles are attracted each other and the kind of attractive force which is present in between constituent particles we call it as chemical bonds constituent particles may be atoms or molecules or ions so the force of attraction present between the constituent particles so that this force of attraction holds the particles together is called chemical bond as we know a chemical bond which is formed by mutual sharing of valence electron of combining atoms is called covalent bond a chemical bond which is formed by transfer of valence electron from one atom to another atom is called ionic bond we have such compounds in chemistry where one atom or group is going to donate its lone pair of electrons to other a chemical bond formed in this situation is called coordinate bond the compounds containing coordinate bond in short i call it as coordination compounds so in this chapter we are going to study about such compounds where we are going to observe the coordinate bond means the one atom or group is going to donate lone pair of electron to another to form a stable compound in this session i am going to discuss about the fundamental terms used in coordination compounds and what are these fundamental terms i have listed over here we learn coordination compound meaning coordinate bond central metal atom coordinate entity ligands chelating complex density coordination number coordination sphere counter ions coordination polyhedron complex ion homoleptic complex and heteroleptic complex so all these are the terminologies used in coordination compounds it is compulsory to know the meanings of these because later we are discussing some theories and examples while is discussing that i use these word frequency so it is mandatory to know the meanings of this so this session is all about knowing the meanings of these fundamental terms so first i am going to move with the first term what i have written coordination compounds so let me write you coordination compounds so what is the meaning of a coordination compound so i gave an hint that in a coordination compounds we have a kind of chemical bond a type of covalent bond that is coordinate bond so what happens actually in case of coordination compounds we have a central metal atom so remember that central metal atom or ion which is surrounded by which is surrounded by ligands which is surrounded by ligands which is going to be linked through a kind of bond that is coordinate bond so the keywords i am going to write on the board so in coordination compounds the compounds which contains a central metal atom or central metal ion which is surrounded by ligands and uh, there is a link between central metal atom and ligand and that linkage is nothing but a type of covalent bond that is a coordinate bond so such kind of compounds we call it as coordination compounds we'll see some example for that one so coordination compounds let me write example k4 fe cn6 so this is an example for coordination compounds so now i think you are quite familiar with such kind of compounds so remember somewhat if you just look over into the 
formula molecular formula is just if you just look over it that will be quite big and we have you know square bracket term so such kind of compounds if you just look over it and if you have a square bracket and that is actually the coordination compounds so in this case k4 fec on 6 in this compound we have a central metal ion we have ligands and we have coordinate bond so what are these so for that i need to draw the respective structure of that one so potassium we have k plus and we have FeCN6, let me draw the structure of that one. Actually, the shape will be uh, octahedral. So, Cn here we have. So, 6 Cn. So, 4 will be at the corners of the and 1 will be above and 1 will be below. This is the complex. So, square bracket I am going to write over here. And uh, here are 4 K plus ions and therefore, I will be writing a 4 minus and uh, all these are actually the coordinate bond. So, if you want me to show the structure of K4 FeCN6, this is structure of K4 FeCN6 which is coordination compound. So, now we will see why per this particular compound is coordination compounds and uh, what are the main terms inside here. So, just observe here, we represented a complex ion in, in the square brackets. So, this is actually the complex ion and here in the exactly at the center what we have, we have you know Fe, iron metal we have and if you just analyze in the chapter D and F lock elements, one concept I told you transition elements or 3D series elements are going to form complex compounds, complex compounds. In complex compounds, we have a central metal atom which is surrounded by a ligand. So, usually the 3D series elements or transition elements, we know the reason behind that why actually the transition elements form the greater number of complex compounds. So, here we have a transition metal, isn't it? So, this iron what we are going to observe. So, this is what actually I call it as for your reference I will write here this is the central metal atom. This is central metal atom. Sometimes central metal ion we are going to get. So, central metal atom we have and this central metal atom is surrounded by certain ions Cn minus ion. So, these ions we call it as ligands. So, let me write here. So, these we call it as ligands. So, central metal atom is surrounded by ligands. So, ligands are going to be joined which is attached to central metal atom a kind of a bond and that bond represented in the form of arrow mark and I hope you remember this kind of arrow marks what we represent and that we call it as what actually that is the coordinate bond that is coordinate bond. So, therefore, this structure is nothing but the complex ion and if you have a cat ion K plus for that and the compound is called coordination compounds. The same meaning I have written. Central metal atom surrounded by ligands. So, iron is central metal atom which is surrounded by ligands linked through coordinate bond. So, this is a coordinate bond as we know arrow mark represent for that one and that is actually the coordinate bond. Such kind of compounds where central metal atom or ion we have which is going to be surrounded by ligands and these ligands are linked to central metal atom through a kind of bond we call it as coordinate bond. Such compounds we call it as coordinate compounds coordination compounds. So, K4 FeCN6 is the best example what I consider. We have n number of examples for that one. Okay, So, we will see that later. So, next term this is the first term. First fundamental term is over oh, now coordination compounds. Second one I am going to talk about that is coordinate bond. Coordinate bond and you can call it as a dative bond also. So, try to know we have two names for this coordinate bond or dative bond. So, we will see what actually the coordinate bond stands for because while defining coordination compounds, we use coordinate bond central metal atom ligands. We will learn the meanings of this. So, first we will see coordinate bond or dative bond. One very simple example I am going to consider here that is I will consider example of NH3 ammonia and I will consider example of BF3 boron trifluoride NF3 and BF3. As we know, according to VSEPR theory, nitrogen contains one lone pair of electrons, isn't it? In ammonia, the nitrogen contains one lone pair of electrons that is easily available for donation. And here, this BF3, this lone pair of electrons is going to given to this BF3. So, nitrogen is going to donate its lone pair of electrons to boron of BF3. 
so in any compound in any kind of chemical bonding you can say if one atom is going to donate a lone pair of electron to another atom a kind of bond is formed that we call it as coordinate bond so how i can write it better better i write nh3 so nitrogen has given the lone pair of electrons for what actually bf3 so this arrow mark okay so this arrow mark pointing towards this one this is a symbol for representation of coordinate bond see here we use the arrow mark isn't it so that is actually the coordinate bond or dative bond so what this arrow mark indicates so the arrow mark is from a nitrogen to boron so what it suggests that so nitrogen has been given its known pair of electrons to boron so such kind of bond is called coordinate bond or dative bond and try to know so nh nh3 so this we call it as lewis base and bf3 this we call it as lewis acid so this concept we know according to the theories of acids and bases third theory of acids and bases as we know arrhenius theory bronsted lorry's theory lewis theory of acids and bases substance which donates lone pair of electrons is called lewis base so ammonia on nitrogen we have a lone pair of electron that is going to donate therefore that is a lewis base whereas bf3 is a lewis acid because the substance which accepts lone pair of electron we call it as lewis acid so therefore bf3 is what actually that is the lewis acid remember that in a coordination compounds we have lewis base as well as lewis acid in in general and the kind of chemical bond formed is called coordinate bond so try to remember coordinate or dative bond is nothing but that is a type of covalent bond so i try to know that is a type of covalent bond covalent bond in which in which one atom or group sometimes we have a group of atoms you can say one atom or group donates donates lone pair of electrons lone pair of electrons to one more atom so that a kind of bond is formed that is called coordinate or dative bond remember that in all coordination compounds we have a coordinate bond so that is about the the second term coordinate bond so now we'll see the third term that is central metal atom let me write here central metal atom and if you observe the structure of k4 if you see in 6 what i have written so now you see that so in the center of this complex ion we have iron that is the central metal atom so what actually central metal atom so central metal atom that may be atom or ion that may be metal atom or ion which is going to be surrounded by which is surrounded by ligands which is surrounded by ligands so we have metal atom or metal ion remember that in the center always we have metal atoms only usually the transition elements so metal atom or ion which is going to be surrounded by ligands and these we call it as central metal atom or central metal ion in this compound fecn6 iron will be the central metal atom because this iron is going to be surrounded by a ligands we call it as central metal atoms so the next one we have coordination entity coordinate entity so we'll see what is the meaning of that coordinate entity so in this case of coordinate entity we have a central metal atom let me write over that central metal atom or ion surrounded by ligands surrounded by fixed number of ligands or definite number of ligands definite number of ligands with definite arrangement of these ligands or definite geometrical arrangement i can say with definite geometrical arrangement that is called coordinate entity so as i said in the coordination compounds we have central metal atom which is in the center and which is going to be surrounded by ligands okay so the ligands are going to be surrounded 
you know around the central metal atom in a definite manner so if you consider any particular example so if you consider FeCN6 as an example so Fe is surrounded by 6 Cn ligands only we have a fixed number of ligands not you know in random number the ligands are going to be surrounded we have a fixed number of ligands and remember these ligands are spatially arranged so that that forms a definite geometrical shape actually the shape of this uh, complex ion is octahedral octahedral because we have six ligands here this shape we call it as octahedral in shape so we have a ligands the in particular fixed number of ligands and we have a definite geometry and such kind of entity we call it as coordinate entity so coordinate entity is nothing but the central metal atom or ion which is surrounded by fixed number of ligands in a definite geometrical shape in a definite arrangement of the ligands and that we call it as a coordinate entity so now coordinate entity we'll see what actually the meaning of ligands so this is actually the very important term because this is new for you and I used frequently while defining all these that metal is surrounded by ligand metal is surrounded by ligand so what actually this ligand is so let me write over here ligands may be ions these may be molecules so try to know this concept so these ligands I told you these may be ions as you know the charged particles ions these may be molecules and these are going to donate which can donate one or more than one lone pair of electrons lone pair of electrons to central metal atom or central metal ion which is going to be linked through coordinate bond so remember that here in this particular example cn i have written cn minus is a ligand so this is cn minus this is particularly ion sometimes we have ligands like water molecule h2o so in this particular cn minus acts as ion we have ammonia which acts as ligand we have a water molecule which acts as ligand these are molecules remember ligands may be ions or molecules and what is the main function of this ligand is these ligands have a lone pair of electrons remember that these ions or molecules have lone pair of electrons and that lone pair of electrons is going to donate to actually central metal atom through a coordinate bond so ions or molecules which can donate one or more lone pair of electrons we have some molecules it has only one lone pair of electron for example ammonia in ammonia on nitrogen we have one lone pair of electron so if you consider water in water on oxygen we have two lone pair of electrons so similarly these ligands are going to donate one or more lone pair of electrons to central metal atom through a coordinate bond and these we call it as what actually ligands here so remember that in general this is central metal atom that is actually lewis acid so try to note lewis acid in general if you want to remember and these ligands are actually lewis bases not all but uh, maximum of these ligands or of Lewis bases here Lewis acid central metal atom is of Lewis acid so in this particular example BF3 is a Lewis acid because in the BF3 so boron we don't have you know the lone pair of electrons all the pair of electrons are bonded in case of a BF3 so therefore the substance which is going to accept the lone pair of electron that should be the Lewis acid that is the fundamental definition of Lewis acid therefore the central metal atom whatever you consider that should easily accept the lone pair of electron given by ligands whereas if you consider ligands ligand should be of a Lewis basis because these molecules or ions should contain a lone pair of electrons for a donation because as we know the coordinate bond is formed when one atom donates lone pair of electron and one more atom receives a lone pair of electrons so if there is a donation as well as a exception of the lone pair of electrons a type of covalent bond is formed that we call it as a coordinate bond and the compounds of that we call it as coordination compounds so remember that in general central metal atoms are actually Lewis acids and in general uh, you know ligands are nothing but they are Lewis bases so that is the concept about you know the ligands so here the ligand concept is a very important because later we are going to draw the structures and we are uh, learning about the nomenclature so we'll highlight more about ligands types of ligands we'll see now
as we know ligands must donate one or more than one lone pair of electrons to central metal atom through coordinate bond so that a coordination compound is going to be formed so based on how many number of lone pair of electrons an atom is going to donate we classify the ligands into four different types so the first one is let me write over here first one is monodentate ligand monodentate ligand you can call it as unidentate ligand also second one is bidentate ligand you can call it as didentate ligand also by or di you can use any one third one is polydentate ligand and the fourth one is ambidentate ligand so like this we have four different types of ligands monodentate ligand bidentate ligand polydentate ligands and ambidentate ligands you can call it as unidentate ligand for the monodentate and you can call it as didentate ligand for the bidentate ligands as i said the condition is based on how many lone pair of electrons is going to donate self explanatory word these are so let me move with the first one that is monodentate ligand so the first one i am going to move with that is monodentate ligand as the name indicates monodentate so mono stands for one unidentate ligand uni stands for one so any atom if it donates only one lone pair of electron to the central metal atom through coordinate bond these kind of ligands we call it as monodentate ligands so remember monodentate ligands are nothing but they are ligands which can donate which can donate only one lone pair of electrons one lone pair of electrons so if any ligand which it donates only one lone pair of electrons and that we call it as a monodentate ligand so remember monodentate means in that particular ion or molecule we have such atom which contains only one lone pair of electrons which is available for donation so that a coordinate bond is formed and these kinds of ligands we call it as monodentate ligands we'll see examples for that one so examples i am going to classify into three different types as i said ligands may be ions or molecules isn't it so we have negatively charged ligands we have positively charged ligands because ligands may be ions and we have a molecules molecules are nothing but neutral so now these monodentate ligand i classify into neutral ligands negatively charged ligands and positively charged ligands the first one i am going to move with that is a neutral ligand so let me write here neutral ligands as the name indicates these are the ligands without any charge we don't have any positive or negative charge over these ligands and of course they are going to donate the one lone pair of electron to central metal atom through coordinate bond so examples i am going to write here what are the examples for the neutral ligands so let me write the symbol as well as the name so you need to remember the symbol for the ligands as well as the names so nh3 so this is a ligand we call it as amine H2O it is a neutral ligand and the name is aqua we have CO and the name is carbonyl NO nitrosyl let me write over here CH3NH2 methyl amine C five H five N pyridine. So these are all some examples for neutral ligands. So if you observe the symbol, I have not represented any positive or negative charge. That indicates these are the neutral. And remember, in all these, they have ability to donate one lone pair of electrons to central metal atom. So remember the symbols as well as the names. It is compulsory because later we are discussing about nomenclature. So in the nomenclature, I will be writing the formula, and we are supposed to write the names. So so that you need to know the symbol as well as names. Remember that NH3 we call it as amine. All these are ligands. 
ligands remember we are talking about ligands so nh3 amine h2o aqua we need to call co carbonyl no nitrosyl ch3 nh2 methyl amine c5 h5n pyridine so all these belongs to neutral ligands second class i am going to consider b and in b i consider negatively charged ligand negatively charged ligands and we'll see the examples in this case so negatively charged ligands as the name indicates we have ligands with the negative charge and they are going to donate one alone pair of electrons to central metal atom so negatively charged ligands we have examples so let me write the examples so just observe the symbols as well as names both i am going to write here f minus fluorido cl minus chlorido br minus bromido and i minus iodido cn minus cyanido scn minus theocyanido ch3coo minus aceto we have some other oh minus hydroxo o2 minus oxo no2 minus nitro no3 minus nitrato o n o minus nitrito s o 4 2 minus sulfato one more i write c o 3 2 minus carbonato so all these are negatively charged ligands you need to know the symbol as well as the names so see here f minus fluorido Cl minus chlorido, Br minus bromido, I minus iodido, Cn minus cyanido, SCN minus S sulfur we have theocyanido, CH3CO minus aceto, OH minus hydroxo, O2 minus oxo, NO2 minus nitro, NO3 minus nitrato, ONO minus nitrito. So don't get confused, nitro, nitrato, nitrito, NO2 minus, NO3 minus, ONO minus, SO4 2 minus sulfato, CO3 2 minus carbonato. So if you observe these symbols, in all these symbols, I am mentioned minus, that is nothing but negatively charged ligands, these are, and they are going to donate one lone pair of electrons. So third class, the C, and what is that C? Positively charged ligand. positively charged ligands as the name indicates we have ligands which is going to donate one lone pair of electrons to the one more atom so that it has a positive charge so let me write example for that one no2 plus and one i am going to consider no no2 plus nitronium and no plus nitrosonium so these are the examples for positively charged ligands so three classifications i made under the concept of a monodentate ligand remember all these ligands why what i mentioned all these are lewis bases and these are going to donate one lone pair of electrons to central metal atom based on the charge or as i said ligands may be ions or molecules so based on that we have a neutral ligand negatively charged ligand and positively charged ligands so neutral ligand we don't have any charge over there whereas the negatively charged ligand and some are one minus and these are two minus whereas we have positively charged ligand and these are you know plus one is the charge of that in general if you observe the negatively charged ligands every word is going to end with o observe here 
bromido iridido nitro oxo like that and here we have you know what actually nitronium and nitrosonium there is no alternative option for this so you need to remember the symbols as well as the names that is the first type of ligand we call it as monodentate ligand second type of ligand bidentate ligand number 2 bidentate ligand as the name indicates these ligands are going to donate two lone pair of electrons donate two lone pair of electrons two central metal atom or ion through coordinate bond so that a complex compound or coordinate compound is going to be formed by dentate ligand two lone pair of electrons has to donate examples we'll see the example one example i am going to write here that is oxalate oxalate ion and remember we represent oxalate ion as ox remember that ox stands for oxalate ion oxalic acid we know C2H2O4 or C double H bond C double H. So let me write over here. So C double O H if I write and C double O H that is oxalic acid and both hydrogens are replaced. Therefore C O O minus single bond C O minus that is actually oxalate ion. But while writing we write it as C2 O4 two minus. Remember that. C2 O4 two minus is the symbol for oxalate ion. we represent it as ox and the formula is c2o4 2 minus that is oxalate ion remember bidentate ligand that is means oxalate ion is going to donate two lone pair of electrons to central metal atom from where actually two lone pair of electrons will come from so this is where the position we have a lone pair of electrons so electrons are going to donate two lone pair of electrons that a central metal atom coordinate bond is going to be formed so this is an example for what actually the bidentate ligand one more example i write here and the, let me write the name ethane 12 diamine ethane 12 diamine but we represent it as en we use this frequently so en if we have en and remember that that is ethane 12 diamine which belongs to bidentate ligand so what the structure ethane so ch2 ch2 we have carbon number 1 carbon number 2 1 2 diamine two amine groups will be present at carbon number 1 and carbon number 2 so this is the structure of ethane 1 2 diamine so remember that we have a lone pair of electrons on this nitrogen and lone pair of electrons on this nitrogen so they are going to donate lone pair of electrons towards the metal ion so that a coordinate bond is going to be formed so remember that ox oxalate ion en ethane one to diamine these two belongs to bidentate ligand because they are going to donate two lone pair of electrons so how actually they are going to donate one example i consider by considering this particular en as a ligand this is a ligand we have which is bidentate ligand and let us assume we have a metal in general i write it as metal so that may be any transition element so metal we have so what happens the lone pair of electrons on this nitrogen is going to donate to this metal and this lone pair of electron is is going to donate to metal and a coordinate bond is going to be formed and a complex or coordination compound is going to be formed so this is how we have donation of two lone pair of electrons to central metal atom therefore these two belongs to bidentate ligand and if you consider this particular example and here if you consider a metal this is going to right and this is going to donate bidentate ligand these two are third type polydentate polydentate ligand so third one we'll see polydentate ligand as the name indicates so these ligands are going to donate many lone pair of electrons many lone pair of electrons or in sense i can say more than two lone pair of electrons any 
molecule or ion is going to donate and that belongs to polydentate ligand. Poly stands for many polydentate ligand. Many lone pair of electrons is going to be donated to central metal atom through coordinate bond to form a coordination complex here. So, we will see one example. The well known example I write here. The very good example for polydentate ligand is EDTA and we have the expand form of that one. So, EDTA let me write here ethylene diamine ethylene diamine tetra acetate ethylene diamine tetra acetate ion so this is nothing but the full form of edta edta belongs to polydentate ligand ethylene diamine tetra acetate ion in particular, in general I said this is a polydentate ligand, particularly this is a hexadentate ligand. This is actually hexadentate ligand. I hope you can guess what would be the meaning of hexadentate ligand. Hexadentate ligand, hex 6. So, in EDTA, this EDTA is going to donate 6 lone pair of electrons to central metal atom. Therefore, EDTA we call it as hexadentate ligand. So, EDTA donates 6 lone pair of electrons and we will see what would be the structure of EDTA and how actually 6 electrons are going to be donated to central metal atom. So, now I am going to draw uh, the shape of this EDTA that stands for ethylene diamine tetraacetate ion. So, just observe here. Ethylene CH2 and here I consider CH2 and uh, we have uh, NH nitrogen ethylene diamine isn't it. So, NH and NH we have uh, the two bonds over here two bonds. So, ethylene diamine tetracetate actually there is a bond between carbon and nitrogen. So, let me draw in this fashion it will be more preferred. So, I write CH2 because I need to show the bond between carbon and nitrogen. CH2, CH2. We have a nitrogen, we have a nitrogen and we have a two bonds over here and this would be CH2, COO minus and here we have CH2, COO minus and toward this nitrogen also we have a two acetate ions CH3, COO minus and uh, CHT COO minus this is actually EDTA carbon valence is for that, that is satisfied and the nitrogen three bonded pair of electrons that is also satisfied. So, CH2 CO minus we have so two carbons ethylene you can remember diamine and we have but the two hydrogens of one nitrogen are replaced by acetate ion CH3 CWH acetic acid CH3 CO minus acetate ion. So, two hydrogens of nitrogen are replaced by acetate ion. So, this is actually EDTA which belongs to poly dentate ligand in a particular hexadentate ligand ethylene diamine tetraacetate and now the question arises how actually the four sorry six lone pair of electrons are going to donate so this is the structure actually so now let me consider here i have one uh, central metal atom in general m so central metal atom we have and uh, this edta and if it approaches the central metal atom that donates six lone pair of electrons how actually six lone pair of electrons See here on this nitrogen we have one lone pair of electrons and on this nitrogen we have one lone pair of electrons okay and we have uh, four acetate ions so these four acetate ions are going to donate a lone pair of electrons so i can show in this manner so this is a one coordinate bond two coordinate bond three coordinate bond and four coordinate bond and one more will be this lone pair of electrons and this is going to donate a lone pair of electrons and this lone pair of electrons is going to donate here totally we have six lone pair of electrons which is donated to central metal atom therefore edta belongs to hexadentate ligand in particular polydentate ligand you can say that is about the third type of ligands that is polydentate ligand. We have one more, the fourth one. The fourth one is ambidentate, ambidentate ligand. So, ambidentate ligand. So, in this case, ambidentate ligand. So, let me write the statement, very simple statement. Ligands which contain one or one or more donor atoms one or 
मोर डोनर अटम्स बट बट वेन कॉम्प्लेक्स इज फॉर्म्ड बट वेन कॉम्प्लेक्स इज फॉर्म्ड only one only one donor atom is going to attach when only one donor atom attaches central metal atom central metal atom or central metal ion you can say so that is the meaning of you know bidentate sorry ambidentate ligand so try to understand the concept of ambidentate ligand ambidentate ligand it is a ligand and uh, actually in that case we have a more than one donor atom one example i am going to consider if you consider this uh, en that is ethane 1 to diamine we have a nitrogen is the donor atom donor atom means the atom that possesses lone pair of electrons that is going to donate the lone pair of electrons that we call it as donor atom so in ambidentate ligands that is such kind of ligands we have more than one donor atom and remember if we have more than one donor atom at a time both donor atoms are not going to donate lone pair of electrons when complex is going to be formed out of two only one donor atom is going to donate lone pair of electrons and that donor atom is going to attach to central metal atom so observe here the ligands which contains one or more donor atoms but when complex is formed only one donor atom attaches to central metal atom we'll consider example then it will be easy so the first example i'm going to consider here is cn minus cn minus actually we know cn minus belongs to monodentate ligand why because it donates one lone pair of electrons in a particular negatively charged ligand why because the charge is a negative so cn minus is the best example for ambidentate ligand so why see here. we have cn minus we have two atoms one is carbon and one is nitrogen remember in this example carbon can also donate lone pair of electrons as well as nitrogen can also donate lone pair of electrons so in this particular ion we have more than one donor atom but remember when cn minus is going to approach to central metal atom both carbon and nitrogen are not attached out of these two one donor atom is going to attach and that we call it as ambidentate ligand so let me explain in this fashion so cn minus we have so in first case carbon is going to attach to the central metal atom so we have a central metal atom one and carbon is going to donate the lone pair of electrons to the metal so if nitrogen donates so how we write here if nitrogen donates we write nc and the metal i am going to consider here for your reference i underline that n because nitrogen is going to donate lone pair of electrons in this case carbon is going to donate lone pair of electrons so uh, this is actually example of ambidentate ligand we have a carbon as well as nitrogen both have ability to donate lone pair of electrons but at a time they both cannot donate in this particular example carbon is going to donate lone pair of electrons in nc nitrogen is going to donate lone pair of electrons one more example we'll see no2 minus in no2 minus so no2 here we have a nitrogen as well as oxygen both can donate lone pair of electrons if nitrogen donates lone pair of electron this is how this is the coordinate bond isn't it so nitrogen donates co coordinate nitrogen donates lone pair of electrons to this metal so nitrogen i underlined here sometimes oxygen is going to donate so how i write here i i can write o n o so in this case what happens oxygen is going to donate the lone pair of electrons to metal so i underline that oxygen is going to donate so this we call it as a nitro and this is a nitrito while naming that uh, we used that one more example scn minus theo cyanido so in this case sulfur can donate as well as the nitrogen can donate so here what i do scn if sulfur donates and that is going to be attached with the central metal atom and if nitrogen donates if a nitrogen donates and that is going to attach with what actually the central metal atom so try to remember these are the examples wave we have more than one donor atom and that we call it as ambidentate ligand but when complex is formed 
out of these two only one is going to attach to the central metal atom in a cn minus carbon attaches to central metal atom because carbon donates lone pair of electron n attaches to central metal atom because nitrogen donates lone pair of electrons we'll see some other complex compounds later in no2 nitrogen is also donor atom and oxygen is also donor atom in ssen minus theo cyanide ion sulfur is also donor atom and nitrogen is also donor atom and that is all about you know the ambidentate ligand and that is all about the types of ligands monodentate ligand bidentate ligand polydentate ligand and ambidentate ligand you need to remember all the symbols what i told and all the names that would be the term related to ligands next term chelating complex we'll see the meaning of chelating ligand and chelating complex let me write the keywords involved here chelating complex first we'll see what is actually chelating ligands so these are di or polydentate ligands di or polydentate ligands that uses two or more lone pair of electrons two or more donor atoms with lone pair of electrons two or more donor atoms which binds which binds to central metal atom or central metal ion central metal atom or ion or ion these we call it as chelating ligand chelating ligand so remember these chelating ligands may be di or polydentate means they may donate two lone pair of electrons or more than two lone pair of electrons in this case these ligands are going to use two or more donor atoms i use two or more because in case of didentate ligand that uses two lone pair of electrons in case of polydentate ligand the particular donor atoms uses two donor atoms for the more than one lone pair of electrons and so that these donor atoms are going to directly attach to the central metal atom that are going to bind to the central metal atom such kind of ligands we call it as what actually chelating ligands one example i give you edta just i explained that ethylene diamine tetraacetic ion if you recall the structure of edta we have a two nitrogens containing lone pair of electrons and four acetate ions so we have a two nitrogens and four acetate ion they are going to donate lone pair of electrons to central metal atom therefore edta is the best example for chelating ligand and the complex formed by such chelating ligands we call it as chelating complex here so chelating ligand and the complex formed by chelating ligands we call it as a chelating complex remember edta is an example for chelating ligand and the complex of edta where edta acts as a ligand and that complex we call it as chelating complex here next we'll see what actually the meaning of denticity we'll see denticity meaning so i hope you can guess what would be the meaning of denticity as we used monodentate bidentate so it depends on number of number of donor atoms number of donor atoms or number of donor groups you can say so ligating atoms also you can say the total number of ligating atoms or total number of donor groups we call it as a denticity donor groups or i can say it as ligating groups ligating groups means these are the groups or atoms that are going to donate so ligating is the better word i can use so density denticity is nothing but the number of ligating groups present in a ligand we have a ligand and how many number of ligating groups how many number of ligating atoms or donor atoms we have that defines what actually denticity examples will see do you remember what is ox stands for ox ox stands for oxalate ion which belongs to bidentate ligand we classified the ligands isn't it so what about the denticity of ox the denticity is 2 if you just recall uh, you know what i mentioned here the formula will be c2 
O4 2 minus C double O minus C double O minus. So two donor atoms we have, two ligating groups we have. They are going to donate lone pair of electrons to the central metal atom. Therefore, oxalate ion uh, the density will be two. If I consider En as an example, do you remember En? Ethane 1 2 diamine. NH2, CH2, CH2, NH2, we have two nitrogen which, which contains two lone pair of electrons and they are going to donate. Means in EN, we have two ligating groups, therefore the density of EN is 2. Now I hope you can answer this one. What would be the density of EDTA? Density of EDTA. EDTA, we have two nitrogens which contains lone pair of electron and for acetate ions they are going to donate the lone pair of electrons totally we have six ligating atoms in EDTA therefore density of EDTA is six remember that density is nothing but total number of ligating atoms or groups present in a ligand next term coordination number we will see that one what is the meaning of coordination number CN in short we write coordination number coordination number as the name indicates if you count the total number of coordinate bonds if you count the total number of coordinate bonds that constitutes coordination number examples will see so some examples are right here later we are going to learn all these so one example I write for coordination compound so NiCO4 and uh, I hope you can guess if you have the knowledge of a central metal and a ligand. Now, I hope you can remember nickel is a central metal atom. CO carbonyl is ligands. How many ligands we have? Four ligands we have. So, just imagine we have a Ni nickel which is central metal atom which is going to be surrounded by four carbonyl which acts as a ligands. So, how many coordinate bond is possible here? So, four coordinate bonds. So, in this particular compound, the coordinate bonds is nothing but four. Therefore, the coordination number of this compound is four because in this compound, we have four coordinate bonds. One more example. Fe Cn6 2 minus, sorry, 4 minus. Fe Cn6 4 minus. The names we will see later. So, Fe Cn6 4 minus. So, how what is the coordination number? If you want a coordination number, you need to observe how many coordinate bonds we have. Try to know Fe is the central metal atom and Cn minus are the ligands. So, how many ligands are there? Six ligands are there. So, six ligands are going to surround Fe. Therefore, the coordination number is six in this case. One more example Co cobalt. C2O4 3 and 3 minus. So, cobalt is central metal atom and C2O4, what is that? C2O4 2 minus, as I mentioned, C2O4 2 minus, what is that? Oxalate ion. So, what would be the coordinate number for this one? You need to see what would be the coordinate bonds we have. So, we have a three oxalate ions but remember in the previous example CO carbonyl which is a neutral monodentate ligand means one lone pair of electrons we have whereas in case of a CN minus negatively charged monodentate ligand one lone pair of electrons whereas C2O4 2 minus is bidentate ligands bidentate ligands means we have two ligating atoms means two lone pair of electrons is going to donate to the central metal atom but how many oxalate we have three we have so three oxalate we have and each oxalate contains what actually the two ligating atoms therefore how what how many coordinate bond we have six what is the coordination number six is the coordination number since it is a bidentate ligand therefore i multiplied the number of ligands with two because here i am going to talk about the coordination number coordination number is nothing but the total number of coordinate bonds and coordinate bond is formed when one atom donates lone pair of electrons to another particularly central metal atom therefore this is bidentate ligand therefore 3 into 2 I did that is nothing but 6 and that is about coordination number next term coordination sphere coordination sphere and I will explain the next one also that is counter ions 
coordination number and counter ions. So let me consider one simple example. K4 Fe Cn6. And uh, now you know this is example of coordination compounds where iron is central metal atom, Cn minus is ligand. In a particular monodentate ligand it is that may act as ambidentate ligand also we have a positive ion K4 and structures we know that one. So first we will see what is the meaning of coordination sphere and later we will see counter ions. Remember coordination sphere means you need to observe the term involved in the square bracket. So in the square bracket what we have? We have a central metal atom or ion and ligands we have. So central metal atom or ion and ligands they are placed inside the square bracket and this we call it as coordination sphere. So try to know this we call it as a coordination sphere. So coordination sphere is nothing but the central metal atom or ion and ligands are placed within the square bracket and that we call it as coordination sphere and we have one more that is k plus k plus is a cation so this k plus this we call it as a counter ions so try to know this we call it as a counter ions why we call it as counter ions remember counter ions must be ionizable ionizable when you take this compound and when you dissolve in water and these ions must these this uh, these ions the cation and ion they are supposed to ionize they are supposed to separate as cation and ion here k4 we have so it is going to ionize as a 4k plus ions so therefore counter ions are nothing but these are the ions which is outside the coordination sphere i can say or I can say the counter ion are nothing but they are outside the square bracket. Inside the square bracket we call it as coordination sphere. The ion in particular ionizable groups or ions which are present outside the coordination sphere we call it as counter ions. Remember one the main function of counter ion is that is going to balance the charge of the coordination sphere. This counter ion is going to balance the charge of the complex ion you can say that we call it as coordination ion. Remember that whenever you see any complete coordination complex inside the square bracket we call it as coordination sphere and outside the square bracket we call it as counter ions. Counter ion should be ionizable that is the concept of coordination sphere and coordination ions. Counter ions we have coordination polyhedron. coordination polyhedron as I said the ligands are not randomly surrounded around the central metal atom there is a definite manner there is a definite pattern so these ligands are spatially arranged three dimensional structures some are and in the space these ligands are spatially arranged around the central metal ion or you can say in simple geometry of the complex we call it as coordination polyhedron. So some standard uh, you know the geometry I am going to write here where uh, here I am going to consider M stands for central metal atom and L stands for ligand. So try to understand here. So now I am going to consider M and uh, which is a central metal atom which is surrounded by ligand. So in this particular example central metal atom is surrounded by four ligands and I hope you know the the shape or geometry of this is a tetrahedral. All the ligands are occupied at the four corners of the tetrahedron. Therefore, tetrahedral shape we are going to get. So, some other I am going to consider. So, we have a central metal atom and uh, we have a ligand over here. So, four ligands and of course, uh, we have uh, this shape and I hope you can guess the shape we call it as square planar. Square planar the shape. So, four ligands we have and central metal atom and I can consider one more the central metal atom and which are surrounded by four ligands and we have one more ligands okay as a pyramid therefore this we call it as a square pyramid square pyramid shape and if we have the central metal atom and uh, in trigonal fashion the ligands are arranged and one ligand is above and one ligand is uh, below. Of course it, ha it has excess of lone pair of electrons and this we call it as a trigonal, trigonal bipyramidal, trigonal 
bipyramidal shape we are going to get. So these are the standards. So one more I am going to consider. So let me write over here. So we have a central metal atom and we have a six ligands and four are in this fashion in the plane and one will be above and one will be below and these we call it as octahedral shape. So some standard polyhedron I have drawn to understand. So tetrahedral, square planar, square pyramidal, trigonal by pyramidal and octahedral where in all these cases M stands for central metal atom and L stands for ligand and these ligands are spatially arranged around the central metal atom or you can say geometry of the complex ion is called coordination polyhedron. In general M and L I consider later we are going to consider some particular examples and all these are remember that in all these examples these ligands are going to donate the lone pair of electrons to metal that is about the coordination polyhedron. So now we'll look over the last part of the fundamental term complex ion homoleptic complex and heteroleptic complex complex ion let me write here as the name indicates complex ion this should be charged species remember that charge complex ion is a charged species that may be positive or negative and this complex contains central metal atom surrounded by ligands. So charged species containing central metal atom or ion which are surrounded by ligands we call it as complex ion. In complex ion I classify the two different types homoleptic complex and one more is a heteroleptic com complex here. So let me write that. So here I consider homoleptic complex, homoleptic complex and uh, one more we have and uh, that is a heteroleptic concept complex I write here. heteroleptic complex homo means the same hetero means different this we know I consider example then we'll understand what, what actually homoleptic and uh, heteroleptic complex here one very good example I consider that is uh, tetracarbonyl nickel NiCO4 and the example for heteroleptic complex I consider platinum and uh, NH32Cl2 with the square bracket. As we know both are coordination spheres only means we have a central metal atom surrounded by ligands and that should be enclosed within the brackets enclosed within the braces. So that we call it as coordination sphere. So now you tell me in this particular example this nickel is a central metal atom or central metal ion isn't it. We have a CO that is a carbonyl and that is a ligand isn't it. Whereas if you consider this particular example platinum is the metal atom or ion but here we have NH3 amine that is ligand right and we have one more Cl minus that is also ligand. Now I hope you can guess what would be the meaning of homoleptic and heteroleptic. If you have the coordination compound in which central metal atom is surrounded by only one type of ligand that corresponds to homoleptic ligand. Nickel is surrounded by the ligands we call it as carbonyl. We have a single type only one type of ligand we have whereas if you consider this particular example platinum is surrounded by amine ligand as well as a chlorido ligand. So platinum is surrounded by NH3 that is also ligand and Cl minus that is also ligand. We have you know uh, not the same kind of ligands. We have more than one same kind of ligands, two different kinds of ligands we have and that we call it as a heteroleptic complex. Complex in which central metal is surrounded by only one type of ligand homoleptic complex. Complex in which central metal atom is surrounded by more than one type of ligand and that we call it as a heteroleptic complex and that is about you know the complex ion and we studied all the fundamental terms that is coordination compound, coordinate bond, central metal atom, coordination entity, ligands, chelating complex, density, coordination number, coordination sphere, counter ions, coordination polyhedron, complex ion, homoleptic complex and heteroleptic complex. All these are the terminologies used in coordination compounds. In the next section I talk about nomenclature of coordination compounds.